Join us today as we travel to New York City. Wait, 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 wait. Don't you mean Tokyo? Oh, yeah, that's right. Join us today in our last video of Tokyo, Japan. We've been in the city for the past two days, seeing everything from the top to the bottom. And in our last days here, we discovered Tokyo's anime side of the city, the quiet small streets, and venture into the islands around the city. Come along and join us for this epic adventure. We just experienced an earthquake. It's 4 a.m. It's 4 a.m. There was an alarm that went off, like a really loud one, and it said, Earthquake. Seek shelter nearby. And it was all shaky. Everything was shaky. It was pretty surreal. So they actually have smoothies here where you just get a plastic cup with smoothie mixture and there's and a machine. There's machine where you, yeah. It'll like shred it up for you. It. So like they have strawberry, banana, and pineapple. <laughs> open it? Yep. And just like that, you have a smoothie. Let's give it a little tasty taste. Mmm. That's really good. How is it, girls? It's really good. It's great to have. It's nice. It's yeah. Fresh fruit smoothies at 7 Eleven. It is day number three here in Tokyo, Japan, and we are headed to uh, another area called the Hakihabara, which is basically the anime area where you find all the designs, and we'll see what we see when we get there. And you can also find tons of electronics, which is pretty neat. There ain't no way this uh, city would have a Bucky's. No. I know that. It would take up like a whole district. We have surprisingly found a trash can here. It's the what? first one we spotted. Jackpot, jackpot. We play vending machines at games on the street like that. What's this? This is weird. There's all these vending machines here and trading. Oh, they're trading cards. You know, like cards and you can buy them and then you trade them. That is so bizarre. Buy trading cards of girls or boys. And then you got the vending machines and like. It's just funny, like last night when we saw all these like men playing um, arcade games, like a whole center of them just playing games. It's so different. that we walk by is anime so anybody who is into anime this would be like their dream destination to come and see I feel like it's like you know when you have happy meals like as kids you get those little toys it's like a whole slew of them but for adults not for kids what It's pretty cool because in this store you can find like every single product possible and imaginable. It's like having all these like technology stores on steroids. It has you have access to everything. Everything. It's unbelievable. So got your pearls hanging by my bedside. This is what I'm talking about. These are like the professional whack homes. Like check These this are out. So big. This is why they have like anime and our theory behind everything is like the reason why they're so good at drawing all these things is because when they're little children, they have to learn like five thousand different symbols and that's not even the full alphabet. Like there'd be like 
20,000, let's say, but the minimum that you have to learn, imagine, is, is 5,000. So the average child in America, we learn like, what, 27 letters? <laughs> That's why they're so good at drawing. Yeah, that That's our so theory. Cool. Oh, Ashley's drawing a beautiful butterfly. You know what I like about this city is how everything is like pieced together. So we just went by all the surf and um, like snowboards, skateboard shops, and then it's like all in a row. Everything's kind of like that. It makes it very efficient for getting stuff done. Look at this. You get your own little cubicle here at 7-Eleven to go in and enjoy and eat in your own little private area. It's a bit overcast and raining right now, but we're heading to where all the secondhand bookshops are. Hopefully they're not all in Japanese because then we won't be able to understand any of them. I think we found a win that's a winner. Let's go see what it's like. This one shop we're in, it only has new books, but there's a coffee shop. But all of the books are only in Japanese, not in English, so that doesn't really work for us. While they're looking at books, I'm going to go check out some bags. I love bag shopping. It's so much fun. See all the different styles around the world. Where I found the best bags is, believe it or not, and like good quality and inexpensive, was Ubrique in Spain, and then Venice, Italy, and Rome. Uh, and maybe like what we just found in Mongolia, they actually had some good leather purses there too for like really inexpensive so I'm talking like inexpensive good quality combination and I forgot one other spot it is in Turkey so in between Antalya and Bodrum somewhere along there we stopped way back when and they just had so many unique leather bag shops and really good quality both leather bags and shoes. This store is kind of cool you've got every kind of magazine from back in the day like going all the way. It's like a vintage magazine shop. Who would have thought that there'd be an interest for all these like old magazines? Don't throw away your magazines. You can come back here to Japan and sell them to secondhand shops. What do you think of these girls? They're so old. <laughs> so old, huh? Wow. Not only are these books old, but they're super massive. So what's so cool about being here in Tokyo is that I have three classmates from Crimson Global Academy that live here in this city. I'm going to be meeting up with them, hopefully all of them. So I've got, there's Erin, Haki, and Annette. Erin, hopefully I'm going to meet up in like 10 minutes or so. She just went and did her exam. Haki, hopefully tomorrow and Annette as well. But it's so cool. Crimson Global Academy is an online high school. I did psychology, economics, and business with them and you have classmates and teachers from around the world. So when I come to a city like Tokyo, I can be like, hey, I'm here, let's meet up. And I've only seen them digitally on Zoom. So this will be my first time seeing them in person. We've become close friends, you know, talking online and such. We are running in the yeah, rain. It's pouring. We're going to meet with Julia's friend here yeah. in Japan. But it is pouring. We don't have an umbrella. So she fun. doesn't have a sweater. I have a skirt. Let's go to the My parents are doing their own thing. Stuff. Update, so this is our hair. We are soaking wet. wet. We're it's reading pouring rain. We're reading at the station. We've only got a couple more minutes and then we're gonna see Erin. It's exciting. I don't know her that well, but I've seen her before in her classes. We have made it to the Starbucks yeah. and we are about to meet Erin. There's actually two Starbucks, so it's kind of confusing. Yeah. But she was on the other side of the railroad. Right, so. right, right. I think we got it now. Coffee shop, got some coffee. Which nice do you need? Warm. Look at those pancakes, yum! All right, we are heading back on the metro. That was so much fun. She was so sweet. It was so cool to see her in person, not on Zoom. You know what I mean? And tomorrow, Haki is apparently six foot tall, which is super tall. So we'll see in person tomorrow. What's he like? But yeah, that was so much fun. We had some really good pancakes and some fun chats. It looks pretty busy. Here we go. <laughs> Station. 
Now we're trying to find out which is the right exit to go to. There's a couple exits. We want to go to the exit that's closest to the place where our luggage is at because we're actually switching spots tonight because we're going to extend our stay here in Tokyo. So, let's find it. Hopefully, it's, it's just so Chloe scary. and I who went and met up with Aaron. So, so I should like give my parents a back. No, it's fine. We're at this the right spot. All we have to do is find the right exit. We are going to the Iria Gate. All these stations are pretty big, but we have found our exit right here. So we're good as gold, and then we're just down the street to the Miyaru Hotel. Meanwhile, Tyler and I decided to get some food before we ended the night. Here we go! Today is day four here in Tokyo of sightseeing. Now, t last night we stayed more where you could say the locals stay. It yeah. really felt like a quiet neighborhood, still feels like a quiet neighborhood. And we're just observing some of the uh, things that we see. So one of the things that we've noticed is that um, people ride bikes here quite a bit, all yeah. ages. So you see like very old, like elderly people riding bikes. They don't wear helmets. No, that's and surprising because most places it's the rule or law to wear a helmet. And one thing as well as you've seen, a lot of ladies like to have bangs here. Like so many ladies, girls, they all wear it. Yeah, they all have, have bangs. Yep. Yeah. And so today is going to be a more relaxing day. Uh, yeah. So far it looks nice weather-wise. So we're going to go up the Tokyo Tower, which is going to be fun. And then we're going to take you guys to a special place. So make sure you watch to the very end to see. We're going to skip this one because it's too packed. Here comes our train. It looks a little less busy. And what's interesting is, is on the maps, it'll actually tell you if you board at a certain like gate or whatever, not gate, but cabin, um, that's the best one to exit fastest and stuff like that. So it's pretty well indicated and all has numbers. So easy peasy to understand. So behind me is Tokyo Tower. It was built in 1958. It was inspired by the Eiffel Tower. It's actually taller than the Eiffel Tower, but due to air regulations, they had to change it to a red, orange, white color. And now it's used to go up and see the view. And it's also a broadcasting place. Okay, these are the care guardians for any child that has had, you know, for stillbirth, miscarriages, or for any children that have uh, passed away. They're there to protect and keep warm their heads with the little red hats that you see and the red aprons and the little windmills. Um, so they're dedicated to the guardian of deity of children's image. Look at all of them. It seems smaller from a distance, but it's pretty big actually. One thing also I thought I'd mention is that the Eiffel Tower in France is like built around a garden. And here it's kind of just like placed in the middle of a city. At least the city was built around it. So this is what it was like when they're building it. And back in the day, Tokyo used to look like this. So you really did look like the Eiffel Tower, if you will. Look how pretty their outfits are. There are two decks you can go to. You can go to the main observation deck or the top deck. because you can see the whole bay area. Like we're really close to the bay area. Very popular for school trips, it looks like. Yeah, it sure is. Okay, in a distance, I'm not sure if you can see, but there's a bunch of Mario Karts coming. Here they go the Mario Karts. That's so cool. So we're about to go up to the top deck and they give you this little um, device and I think it just is going to explain some things. So it's almost like a little tour that you do. Oh, this is the tower gallery. So you learn some history and then you get some welcome drinks when you arrive to the top, so it's really nice. Here we go, even higher up. Wow, this is so cool. very top 250 meters high and it is you can see everything from up here which is pretty cool so this is really cool on the little device they give you it gives you all the viewpoints and you can see oh, really? so we're trying to see uh, we're trying to see if we can see Mount Fuji but it's too um, cloudy. yeah a little bit too blurry right there in front of us, that yeah. it would be normally right over kind of that way there oh wow so Mount Fuji is 3,700 
and some meters high. That's really high. So it's too bad we can't see it though, eh? That would have been really special. Hey. Oh, it's cracking. They won't dare go. <laughs> Conveniently, they had some nice food right in the tower, so we grabbed a quick bite to eat before continuing on. It was like all the retirees kind of, that are all working together to pick up all the leaves and everything, which is really nice, eh? We then went to do a funny photo shoot of the tower in the background, and we got these pretty funny photos to show you. One thing that every single vlogger talks about when they come to Tokyo is staying in a capsule hotel. So, so far, we've been here for a few days. We have not seen one. But right now, today, we are finding the first one right beside a subway station, so. Yeah, and there's many different styles of capsules, apparently. So I don't know, maybe. like, I like my space, so we're not gonna sleep in one. <laughs> not this trip. Nah, I'm sure, um, I'm sure you've seen what they look like, and if not, just go check out uh, every one other person's vlog. All right, so there are a few mini islands you can get to, and we're gonna get there by, via monorail our first time. And we're going to go to the island where, you know, there's Team Labs and the Statue of Liberty and all that. You'll we're see in about a minute. We're taking the Eureka Moni Station. This is so cool because if you get on at the very front, you get the front row seats of everything. Here we go. This is where we went here, and that's where we did the loop de loop over the bridge. Now we're here. We're gonna go back here and show you the Statue of Liberty in Tokyo. Here we go. Got it right here. The Statue of Liberty is right behind me. No, we've never been to New York, but here in Tokyo, welcome to New York. They have the Statue of Liberty, a mini version. The history behind this is during the World Expo, France decided to bring their Statue of Liberty to Tokyo because there's one in France and one in New York that looks side by side, like across the ocean. And the thing is, when they took it back from Tokyo to put it back in France, they left the stand. And Tokyo's like, well, what are we going to do with the stand? So they decided to rebuild it and put it on the stand. So there's three Statues of Liberty in this world. They have a drone school where you can actually get a drone license. Yeah, so because they have the cruise lines, they have like all the activities in the parks and everything like that. Um, it basically feels like a very touristic -y area of the city. We made our way back with this super busy metro, and then it was time for Julia to head out to go meet with her friends. Hi, Julia. There goes Julia, all by herself. So this monorail literally goes all the way from here, and then it goes all the way to the island and back. So it's just like a one-way thing. And there goes Julia. Julia's all by her lonesome in Japan. Let's see how she makes out. What's your prediction? Is Julia going to be okay? Yeah. I'm a hyper up. She's going to be motivated. She knows she's going to go meet her friends. I think she'll be fine. She's 20 this year. So if she's not fine, there's some serious issues going on in this house. 
this is our train, this is the doors, this is the uh, situation here. It is packed, man. We're wondering how we're gonna get off at our station, but uh, yeah, we'll figure it out. Oh my gosh, this is the hardest metro to get off. I'm stuck and pushed back into the middle of the train cart. You have to like shovel your way through. It's just wild. So which way do you go? This way. Every single, every door is crammed in. because she just went to the busiest station to meet up with her friends like the busiest one in the world so yeah is it gonna be i'm sure it's gonna be so many people it'll be really funny hopefully she's filming it for you guys too something local. We are going to a place where there's the train and there's sushi and such. So this is gonna be a fun experience. Here we go. This is a moving train. Look at this. This is gonna be so cool. You can choose what you want. Okay, so this is how you order. You choose what you want. All right, I am having my first sushi here in Japan. The food came here and I got tuna and salmon. I'm here with Haki and Aaron. This is so fun. I'm very lucky because it came with four pieces of tuna. And I've never seen this before. Very I've been fun. here for 18 years, but I've never seen this before. Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah. All right here goes nothing. <laughs> I'm trying the salmon one first. Mm, yeah, pretty good. I'm trying the tuna. This one is so good. This dessert. Yum. Alright, I'm heading back. It looks pretty busy. Here we go. We had a really fun time with Aaron and Haki. It was so much fun. We went and had some sushi, which was nice because we've been in Japan and Tokyo for maybe like five days now. And we've not had sushi yet. I know, that sounds crazy. My family's not that big on seafood, but I love sushi. So that was nice to have it. And especially when it comes like merry-go-round they call it in the little cart so it was really fun and it was nice to see them in person you know not just online and now i'm walking back i just took the metro and now walking to the air maybe i was gonna say as well tokyo feels like a very safe city even though it's a mega city i'm like walking here it's only nine at night but still feels very safe so yeah mission is successful and the pilot traveler yes i can do that also this neighborhood we're staying in very quiet there's like no one on the streets here it's more residential, where the locals live. And here I am, back at our Airbnb. All right, I'm back home now, and I just wanted to say that it was super easy navigating around Yimbo, it's such a big city, because everything's so well indicated, and they've got it in English and Japanese, and it's really well, like, okay, you can see how many stops, you just go on, and you just follow the path, and then there you are. So it never ceases to amaze me that in Japan, they are such small, tight spaces. So this is where we're staying. Like, we got the kitchen area here. This is like one-ish room. One-ish room. This is where we're all sleeping. So we got like one, two, three, four, five. So it's kind of like, I don't know where this comes from, but when you hear people going to sleep, they're like, good night, little John. Good night, whatever. Good night, everybody. Good night, Mama. Good night, Ben. Good night, everyone. Good night, Mama. Good night, Daddy. Good night, children. Good night, Daddy. Good night, Elizabeth. But um, here we go. This is the best spot. We've got laundry here, and this is our kitchen. 
So there you have it. We are on our way to Kyoto, which is going to be absolutely amazing. Um, we picked a good day for not doing anything because it's raining out. And we left uh, where we were staying last night to head over to the bus station because online we couldn't find any buses um, to go for an overnight bus. And we got to the station and the only bus available, there is one, but it's like she said, or he said there's like tight small seats and the seats don't go back. So that's not gonna work as an option for us. The train option is a little bit much for our family, like it would be cheaper to fly. And then we looked at one-way car rentals. The one place wanted $1,000 thousand for a one-way car rental one day which seems crazy um, we were looking at airport options and none of them were showing available so basically our option was to book for tomorrow so tomorrow morning we're gonna take a bus to Kyoto which is um, like maybe 45 each which is not bad and then we are leaving at 8 a.m. and we just are booking an Airbnb for the night so in our beautiful mansion we have this amazing toilet which has all its amenities electronically. And every time we flush the toilet, the sink runs. Show us how it From works. the tap. So the sink runs, you want to flush the toilet. And then this is clean water that fills up the toilet with dirty water to flush the toilet. And then we've got a soap and towel. So it's all nice and compact. So efficient. So two things about this apartment is they supply you not with one, but six pairs. That means that six people can live in this apartment. And I think it's common for Japanese people to wear slippers in the house. This is our makeshift dinner, so tell me what you were just saying. I was saying how here in Japan and like Korea, they know what they're doing when it comes to noodles. They're good at it. Mm -hmm. And like even this, like they provide air for when it's like warming up and it's boiling so it has air to breathe. And they also provide you with mayo because they love their mayo here. They're all like that. Yummy. And that is a wrap of our Tokyo series. We hope you guys enjoyed. Coming up next, we head over to the city of Kyoto, the cultural city.